The rate at which a chemical reaction takes place can be extremely fast or incredibly slow. In the next few minutes, we're going to look at the rate of chemical reactions. Chemical reactions not depicted in real time. An explosion is a very fast reaction, but you can get very slow reactions too, like the weathering of rocks. So how can we measure the rate of a reaction? We can measure the changes in amounts of the chemicals taking part in the reaction by measuring their mass or volume. So you start off with two different chemicals, an acid and a metal. As a chemical reaction takes place, we can measure the amount of the original chemicals that are left, like how much acid or metal is left. Or we can measure how much of one of the new products has been made, like how much hydrogen has been given off. What we choose to measure depends on whichever is the easiest to do. OK, fine. For a liquid or a solid, we measure the mass using a balance. Gases aren't very heavy, so it's more accurate to measure the volume using a gas syringe rather than their mass. The rate of a reaction is how quickly the reaction is taking place, so we need to measure the time all this takes too. For example, suppose we measure a reaction between an acid and a metal, and we find that 24 cubic centimetres of hydrogen gas is produced in 3 minutes. Then the mean rate is 8 cubic centimetres of hydrogen per minute. 24 divided by 3 equals 8. For a reaction to take place, the particles involved must bump into each other. But that's not enough. The collision must have enough energy to make the reaction happen. This amount of energy is called activation energy. There are several factors that affect the rate of a reaction. They all come down to how often collision takes place and how much energy those collisions have. Let's look at the five factors you need to know about temperature, concentration, pressure, particle size and catalysts. Can you remember all that? No pressure. A higher temperature means particles are moving quicker, and so more particles have the activation energy necessary for a chemical reaction. Much like Formula One cars, the particles collide more often and with more energy, so the rate of reaction increases. Now then, the next factor is concentration. If one of the reactant chemicals is in solution, then the reaction rate will go up if its concentration is increased. There'll be more of the chemical in a smaller volume, so collisions are likely to take place more often. Or in this case, I simply get a sugar rush. Next, let's look at pressure. If one of the reactants is a gas, represented here by the X's in a bubble, then increasing the pressure means that there are more reactant particles in a given volume. Less space, more chance to get under each other's feet. As the pressure increases, so does the rate of reaction. It's a bit like locking all the Big Brother contestants in the bathroom. Next on the list is particle size. If a solid reactant is broken into pieces, there's more surface area, so more particles are exposed to the other reactants. As a result, there's a greater chance of a collision, so the rate of reaction increases. Even better is grinding them up into a powder. That really speeds things up. Ah, uh, double espresso, please. The last factor you need to know about is less obvious. You can use a catalyst. A catalyst is a chemical that speeds up a reaction without being used up in the reaction. Catalysts do this by reducing the activation energy needed for a reaction to take place. Different reactions require different catalysts. For example, the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to make ammonia can be speeded up by having some iron in the mix. The iron is a catalyst, it helps, it speeds up the reaction, but isn't changing the process, it doesn't get used up either. It gets things moving, but doesn't take part. The chemical equivalent of a cheerleader. By increasing the rate of a reaction, catalysts are important in industry, because they reduce costs. More useful products can be made in a shorter time. The harbour process uses an iron catalyst to speed up the production of ammonia, which is used, for example, to make fertilisers for growing crops. So now you know about the rate of reactions, remember, a reaction takes place when particles collide with enough energy at or above the activation energy. And how do we achieve this incredible energy? Remember, the rate of reaction increases in five possible ways. If temperature, concentration or pressure is increased, or if a solid is broken into smaller pieces, or if a catalyst is used.